Today on Larry King Now, culinary innovators. The only way you're able to connect with a guest uh, and surprise them, I think, is with how the food actually tastes and how you make them feel when they're in your restaurant. What made Michael Voltaggio? What made you? I think it's work ethic. Um, I think that's what makes any person who succeeds in their profession. Well, I heard you were a fan of lox and bagels. Because you're it... calling this bagels and lox, my mother is fainting. <laughs> Plus, the meatball guys. What makes a great meatball? Right here. It's grandma's recipe paired with these hands. This man is a ball handler. All next on Larry King Now. Our special guest today on Larry King Now is Michael Voltaggio. He is the award-winning chef and restaurateur. He was recently named one of Food & Wine Magazine's Best New Chefs of 2013. He won on the Top Chef show back in 2009, and he beat his brother in that show. And he's the owner of this incredible restaurant, Inc., one of the wildly successful restaurants here in Los Angeles. He's got another place right down the street called Ink Sack. Why did you name it Inc.? Ink, uh, well, everyone's first uh, idea of ink is that it was a tattoo reference, and, and it's the furthest thing away from that as you could... Or you could, black and white fountain pen. That's actually closer to the real meaning. Um, we couldn't think of the name of the company when we were trying to start our, our corporation. It's something INC, period. We couldn't think of something that made sense for us, so we're sitting around and we're like, ink, 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 something ink, and then we're like, why not just call it ink, ink? And it was kind of a joke, and then we were like, if we put a K on the end instead of a C, then anything that's in ink is permanent. So the idea was that we would start a company that would hopefully be around I for a while. It. Is this your first restaurant? It is. Well, the sandwich shop opened first, but yeah. So what made you decide to go on your own? I think eventually it's, uh, you know, you need to figure out if you can do it your own way, um, if you can succeed yourself without anyone else telling you how to do it. And I think it, it comes back full circle. When you work for somebody else, you're kind of doing it through their vision and you're executing their vision. And then when you start managing other people, it comes back again because you start realizing that you're taking influence from their vision to make your vision stronger. And I think that it was out of arrogance at first, but now I learned a big lesson that I, I need to, to take that same influence that I used to take from the people that I worked for and apply it to the people that work for me. What is molecular gastronomy? That term... Doesn't sound like food. Yeah. I, I think that term was created for people to try and understand uh, a food movement that was happening uh, 10 years ago or so, uh, where chefs were taking things that were done in a laboratory and applying that to uh, cooking in a kitchen. Um, for me, it's, it's, we're not taking food down to like a molecular level. We're just uh, we're taking advantage of technology today and using that as a way to improve how we cook our food or in some cases uh, not improve how we cook our food, depending <laughs> on how it comes out. I was raised in a Jewish home and I'm old school, like I, I like my meat well done. You know, I like um, basics. What I enjoy, ink. I think we could find something on the menu for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to search. You know, we've converted vegetarians in this restaurant, so um, <laughs> I, I think it's, uh, it's a matter of taste. Restaurants today with, with the internet and with technology and, and everything like that, you see everything before you ever go inside of it. So the only way you're allowed to, the only way you're able to connect with a guest uh, and surprise them, I think, is with how the food actually tastes and how you make them feel when they're in your restaurant. GQ magazine called this the best new restaurant in 2011 in the country. Mm -hmm. Was Inca hit from the start? We were. Um, we were, I think, busier than I wanted to be because I didn't feel like we were doing, we were doing our best work when we first opened. Uh, when GQ called, I was uh, Jim Nelson called from the magazine, I Jim. and uh, you know I asked him. I said, "That's great, but but why? Why why did you pick us?" You know, and I was surprised that he had chosen us because a lot of great restaurants had opened that year, and he said, "You know, honestly, it wasn't uh, it wasn't the most perfect experience or." or whatever, I just remember he couldn't really say what it was specifically about the experience. He said that he just liked it. And for me, that was good enough. There, there didn't need to be an explanation. It didn't mm -hmm. need to be measured by how pressed the napkins were or how clean the dining room was, which we take a lot of pride in all of those things. It's the fact that when he was here, he felt good. When he left, he couldn't touch one thing that made him feel that way. What, were, what do you think you put a stamp on? What made Michael Voltaggio what made you? 
Was it a dish? Was it a concept? I think it's work ethic. Um, I think that's what makes any person who succeeds in their profession is the idea that you're going to work hard. Um, I mean, I, how long have you been doing what you're doing now? 57 years. And <laughs> I bet every single day that you wake up to do this, it's as if you were doing it 57 years ago. And I think you have to go Correct. into it with that same... I do. That same discipline for yourself so that, that I mean, hopefully in 57 years, I'm still going to get to go stand behind the stove and hopefully Cole, my chef de cuisine, is still here and we, we're still cooking food for people. Is your brother, your brother's a chef? Yeah, he's a very good chef. Does he have his own restaurant too? He's got four. Uh, he just opened one that's like 12,000 square feet, which Where? is, it's in D.C. Two years did ago. he have an effect on you? He did. Um, my first job was working in a kitchen where he was the sous chef. So he was in charge. He was the first person under the chef. And uh, I was just a cook. And we hadn't gotten past that. I, it was the, it, that's when I had to learn the professional relationship between uh, a leader and an employee or a boss and an employee. And in my situation, my brother was my boss. So I had to learn really quickly that, uh, you know, you're not allowed to fist fight in the kitchen. <laughs> you're not allowed to scream at your boss. And Do you enjoy fame? I mean, that's a, that's a hard question. I mean, well, you, enjoy, but you know that, that probably hard to get into this place, right? It's difficult. Um, I mean, we've got, we're, we're like any other restaurant. I mean, we have our slow nights. Um, I, you know, we treat it like a business. It's not, it's not a circus. And, um, you know, when our review came out from the LA Times, I remember that the writer had written something like, Voltaggio stands at the kitchen like a carnival barker, telling the ladies to step right up and come. And it, and it wasn't, it, it's never even been about that for us. It was that I feel like people wanted to say that's what we are about, as opposed to coming in and appreciating that we're the complete opposite of that. I hear there's another restaurant concept coming? We're looking at other restaurant concept opportunities, yeah, for sure. Um, we definitely want to do... LA? No, I think for me now, I want to stay here. Can you give me a hint as to what kind of concept it would be? I don't know. Just a hint, I, like I, Chinese. Definitely not Chinese. Um, but that's, you know, it's, it'll be whatever we conceive uh, with each other here in the restaurant. I mean, we'll talk about it and we'll figure out what the next thing is. One other thing. Uh, there's a famous restaurant in Miami Beach called Joe's Stone Crabs. Uh -huh. I used to live in Miami Beach. And they have a guy at Joe's Stone Crabs. His only job is to look at the food before they bring it to the table. How important is the way something looks? It's the first sense that's touched when a dish lands in front of you. So your eyes see it, and then you smell it, and then you start to taste it. So I think that visually, um, that's one of the most important things because that's the first impression that you have when you set a dish down in front of so someone. So that's a big part of your concept. Absolutely, yeah. We shall see what we shall see. You will. Let's go, Michael. <laughs> what are you going to make for moi? Well, I heard you were a fan of uh, lox and bagels. Is that true? Yes, or? I am. Okay. I was raised on lox and bagels. So this is, uh, this is what we refer to as the belly salmon. So when you make a smoked salmon, you usually do the whole side of it. This is smoked salmon made just from the center loin, so the best part of the fish. I'm just going to do a couple little slices of it. And, uh, and this is a dinner dish? This is a dish for Larry. This is Larry's dish. Okay. This actually, I've never done this dish before, so it's either going to be really I, good or it's going to be really I, bad. I we'll find out when we get on there. The, on the ink menu. It could be. What it depends. You, you wouldn't call it bagels and locks. What would you call it on the ink menu? Call it Larry's bagels and locks. Larry's bagels, Larry's and, bagels and locks. And locks. Oh, by the way, I want this on the menu, and I will then start to flag this place. Does that I mean will, you just made a reservation? I, I'm going to make a reservation. Somebody I'll write ask, that down. You I'll just, ask the wife. What Larry night? King's going to eat here. See if we can get in. I hear you have an unlisted number. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> so this lettuce is, is fully dressed. We put it into a bag and vacuum packed it so that the dressing, have you ever had a salad and you start eating it and the top of it tastes really good, but then you start digging Correct. into the bottom yeah. of it and it's dry and there's no lettuce left? Why? Because they saturate the top of the salad before they send it out. A lot of restaurants won't toss everything together. So what we do is we, we put the dressing in the bag, we vacuum pack it so it sucks all the dressing right into the lettuce and you get the same bite every time. Got it. So that's just lemon, lemon vinaigrette. So that's the lemon part of it. Um, for the caper part of it, we thought caper powder would be appropriate. You eat capers with bagels and lox. These are capers that have been dehydrated and then blended into a powder. So this is caper powder. If you want to sprinkle some of that. You want me to do this? How, many, how much capers do you like to You're going to eat it. I'm not, I'm not eating a, it. I'm not a big caper man. I'm, I'll take a little. And I'll write on top of that like Right that. there. And on the salmon too? Sure. Okay. That's Sometime. about capering out for Get me. Get a little messier with it too. Okay. 
And then uh, red onions. So this is a, a red onion gel, basically. So um, you like things rather than the things. You like things of the things. Things of the things. I things get that it. Are... Michael the Magnificent. Go. So this is our red onion. We'll just put some of that. How much red onion do you like? That's good. Right That's there. good. That's it. Okay. Uh, we've got what else? Oh, our bagel. So come on. It's, it's not, not a really bagel. a bagel. It's, it's uh, not a bagel. I like anchovies, so I do too. This, this is uh, this is a dough that we made out of anchovy. I like anchovy. And uh, I like I like pork rinds, but pork rinds aren't very kosher, so they're not kosher, my God. Not yeah, I learned that when I moved to LA. So yeah. we uh, we're making the same thing out of anchovies. So this is basically an anchovy dough that when we fry it, it'll look like a pork rind, but tastes like anchovy. It so looks we'll... like a piece of carbon paper. <laughs> okay. So we'll drop that into the hot oil, and wait for it to uh, float to the top. Once it floats to the top, you can whoa, see whoa, it floated right up. that it goes from this to this. Look at that. So that's our bagel now, or anchovy pork rind, if you will, with no pork, obviously. And then we've got over here uh, some agretti or seagrass. It's like a little... Uh, seagrass. It's like a little weed. We'll call this it a weed. It's like, this is garni. Garni, yes, garnish, garni. We'll just dress this with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of sea salt. And we'll place a couple pieces of that right on top of the uh, lettuce there. Wow. And then we've got, uh, do you like butter. cream cheese? I like cream cheese. Perfect. So this is cream cheese snow with just a little bit of horseradish in it. Okay. This is like no dish I've ever seen. So we're going to dust it with a little bit of, of, of cream cheese and horseradish snow. If you're calling this bagels and locks, my mother is fainting. <laughs> okay. Well, the idea is that it still tastes the same when you get into it, though. And then we'll take our anchovy uh, bagel, crispy. Oh. crispy cracker thing, and just set that in there like that. And so that's uh, Larry's uh, well, uh, well, bagels wait, and locks. Michael, how do you eat it? Just dig into it. Even if you don't like it, just say you do. Because no, I there's will people tell you, watching, I, I so I, I tell it's you really the important. Truth. Uh, first of all, we will say this. It looks different. So I would not call it, if we're going to serve this as a dish okay. in, in ink, I would not call it Larry's Bagels and Lux. What are we going to call it? I open in like two hours, so I got to uh, figure that out before we print the menu. Larry's Lux a Swa. Larry's Lux a Swa. Perfect. L O X A S a W. Oh, I can't. I gotta write that down. Okay. Lox. A swa. Larry's a swa. Lox a swa. Got it. Oh, very good. Ah, oh, there we go. Perfect. Good. Thank you. Yes. So I can put it on the menu tonight. Put it on the menu. Now, the only thing is, is this an evening dish? Oh. Well, we don't open till six, so it is an evening dish, I guess. Does anyone eat at six? Sometimes, yeah, yeah we you get about free here. rolls for the early crowd. <laughs> we don't serve rolls. <laughs> you serve bread? No, it's LA. Everybody's gluten free. This is really good. Next time you come to Ink, if you can get in, ask them for Larry's Laksasoir. If they don't have it, storm out. <laughs> this is very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Honest, you make this a regular dish. This could swirl through the city. They would come from Culver City for this. The legend of Larry's Lox <laughs> The legend of Larry's Lox You have a, <laughs> this is a great place and this has been a lot of fun and I can't wait to bring the wife Thank in. you, Larry, I appreciate it. Michael Voltaggio and Ink, it's very in. You don't need a fountain pen. <laughs>
about four and a half years ago that we were going to open up a restaurant together. Uh, we couldn't figure out a concept that, that we both wanted to do. We really were having a very, very hard time. Um, I knew that Dan ultimately wanted to do they something. They only brought one fork. I'm feeling, yeah. <laughs> feeling a little left You're out. really good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, and so uh, he had worked in fancy restaurants his whole life, really, after our, our little stint at the vegan restaurant. He went straight into, into, into four-star restaurants. And, um, and he didn't want to do fancy food anymore. And uh, so we found this restaurant. We still didn't know what we wanted to do. The restaurant had a little side window. The side window was right next to a very busy bar. We Where saw a bunch that? of uh, Bleecker and Broadway. Uh, Bleecker and uh, Lafayette. Lower East Side. Lower East Side. Bleecker and Bowery. Bleecker and Bowery, right. Between Bowery and Lafayette. I know it well. And so there was a bunch of people hanging outside of this bar, smoking cigarettes and doing whatever they do. Lawn bar. We both Straight looked bar. over there, and, uh, and we, saw, we saw an audience. We needed to feed them. But we didn't want them necessarily to come into the restaurant because they were drunk and loud and whatever. So we said, there's a side window there. We're going to serve something out of that side window. I worked at an Italian restaurant for a long time. I would always eat meatballs by themselves. He, he, would, order, he would order spaghetti and meatballs, hold the pasta because he's a healthy guy and he, he didn't want to eat the carbs late at night. Late night. And then he would order a, a, side of, a side of spinach and a side of broccoli and he would dip it into the sauce and he would eat it. And I would bust his chops because, you know, the guys hold the pasta, come on. And I would be eating my rigatoni ragu, which was delicious. And he told me at the time I was a little bit heavier, so. So you call it the meatballs? Yeah, so we, we basically said, you know, let's do meatballs. Nobody's actually executed a meatball concept. What makes a great meatball? Right here. You're staring at them. These the hands. hands, these hands. It's, it's grandma's recipe paired with these hands. This man is a ball handler. But when you have five of them, who's doing the others? Where are you guys? We, we, we have a, you know, actually recently we just brought all the meatball production into one place. So we actually have the five guys that started with us um, almost three years ago now, three and a half years ago now, and all of them work together make him the meatballs every morning. And then single ship day. them out to the store. And then we ship them out every morning all the store. And then them up there at the store. And then we and then we and we heat them up every day. You know, all the all the chefs are, are incredible that work at the restaurants. But one chef would have a little heavy hand with the salt. You know, we taste, you know, and so we wanted to make sure that the, the, the meatballs were consistent from store to store to store. And that was the main motivation for I would have to say these are the best meatballs I've ever tasted. Are they? Really? You know, I gotta kid I'm not I kid you. I, I, I wouldn't kid you. I would tell you they're good these are Wow. I want you to know that last night at uh, from at, at 10 o'clock last night, I went to the market. I bought I bought the I bought the meat and all the ingredients, and we started making these meatballs. And I thought, I hope these meatballs are good because you know, I mean, this is After this is not this could be this, you know 15 Mr. minutes Breakthrough. with uh, with, <laughs> with, with Mr. King could have gone downhill if he ate the are meatballs you and didn't like them. Going em. national with these. You know, we, uh, we, we, don't have a, we don't have a plan to go national. We certainly know that uh, meatballs are, are liked uh, all over the world, um, specifically in New York right now. We did a pop-up, actually, in Venice um, and... Uh, L.A. In L.A., Los Angeles, and, um, you know, a thousand people showed up in four hours. It was pretty incredible for us to see that. So but you can open here? Most likely not. For the <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we would love to open here, but, you know, we're in New York, and there's still neighborhoods in New York City that are, are begging for the balls. How big are the restaurants? We have a, about 100 seats in our biggest store and 40 seats in our smallest store. And you're still serving outside the window? Absolutely no. not. No, not out, the, not out the window. No, no yeah. but... Uh, I can't believe... I'm so, so sad that this, we made this for you. This is, this is a Brooklyn water bagel... That's from bagel store. pizza. Your store, man. This is a bagel pizza sandwich. Yeah, but, uh, uh, this is seven thousand calories. And not only that, but it is as kosher as it gets. Can I have a bite of this? Because you're you not. Have, yeah, you mind I if I don't care if you eat it. I just want. This to... is from Brooklyn Water Bagel. That is so darn Great good. Bagels, right? All of I want face. it on my face. Yeah, here you take a bite. That is, that is makeup. Mm. I actually stopped by Brooklyn Water Bagel the other day. It was delicious. Pretty good, that wasn't it? Delicious. So good. Yeah, that's pretty good. You're not kidding. The I hope bagel. you're enjoying this, folks, because we are. <laughs> <laughs> do you miss five-star restaurants? I do. I do. I, I, I love working in the environment. I miss mostly, I just miss the camaraderie of working in the kitchen. But, you know, we had the man in the kitchen a couple of days ago. But <laughs> we on the did. Line. <laughs> Everybody knew it. <laughs> this guy. Yeah, I like to use my own. Um, my big boy voice when I'm indoors. Yeah, he does. In the kitchen. Yes, he does. And so the secret is to maintain consistency, so I always know I get secret the secret. Is to, I would say this. The secret is to maintain consistency in our industry, but, but the real secret, the real secret in, in the biz, because it's such a tough business, is to make sure that your staff is excited to be there. That is, the, that is at the, at by f far and away, the most important piece of the puzzle, making sure that your staff is taken care of, because 
everything speaks to that. Yeah. These are terrific. More with Michael and Daniel when we come back. We'll play a little game of If You Only Knew. Don't forget, if you're in New York, hey, it's the meatball shop. What else? <laughs> we'll be right back. We're back with the meatball guys. They own the meatball shops in New York City. And I'm wearing one of, what does this hat signify? What is this symbol? That is our, that's our grinder. It's a symbol of our brand. You know, we, uh, we, we really fell in love with the grinders. We, we use grinders in the decor at our, at our restaurants. And people sort of know that now, walking down the streets in New York. We grind our own meat. You know, we're always on the grind. We grind we grind the meat. We grind our own meat. You're big Yankee fans, right? Big Yankee fans. I'm a that's Dodger a, fan. But you're a Brooklyn Dodger fan. So, yeah. L.A. Dodgers, too. I live out here. I grew oh, up fair. with the Dodgers. I grew up with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Yep. My no, father no. was a Duke Snyder maniac. Uh, I knew Jackie Robinson. I was at his first game. Really? Yeah. Is it true you hire homeless teens? This guy right here, um, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, he started a foundation. It's pretty amazing. Um, where, you know, he's able to actually change, change people's lives um, and take people that haven't had a great opportunity and give them... Um, give them what, what they need in life to actually succeed. It's pretty special. Yeah, we started something called Meatball Heroes, um, you know, and, and as a restaurant in New York City, we always get um, asked by so many different charities to participate, and we always do participate. And then about a year and a half ago, I said, you know, we participate in so many different charities, it would be really nice to sort of focus um, on something that we feel is personal touch to. And so the Covenant House in New York City is a shelter where they, uh, where they house uh, homeless youth. And uh, a buddy of mine works there, and he took me there, and we walked through, and I, I was really touched by the experience. And uh, I thought, what better way to give back to the city that I grew up in than to offer an opportunity to some, some, uh, some kids that, that, that really want to work. And they just didn't have it. They, don't have, it, they don't have a chance. Selfishly, some of, our best, some of our best employees have grown through our chefs uh, have actually come through the program, so. I mean, they've been out. with us for over a year, and it's, it's and life Next time I'm in New York, and I'm gonna come by the meatballs. I hope so. I'll be very and excited. And I expect to be, I'm not even gonna tell you I'm coming. All right. We, we will be there just waiting. Pop in. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. I'm 77th and 2nd, right? That's, yes. that's, that's, the, that's the newest the, shop, the biggest right. and the newest. We want to, we play a little game called uh, If You Only Knew. What's your favorite meatball? Pork meatball. Get up. Spicy <laughs> pork meatballs. God's, God's gift. Your mother that, The pork is the forbidden fruit. God made the apple taste so great and then told the Jews not to eat it. That is the pig. What is your favorite meatball? Actually not a meatball, a vegetarian ball. So we do an amazing veggie ball at the restaurant, and I eat it every single day. What's, what's in it? Lentils, mushrooms, onions, carrots, celery, parsley, tastes walnut. Tastes like a meatball? Tastes just like a meatball. Guilty pleasure. Ladies. Food you can't stand. Uh, I'm not a lamb guy. Not That's his favorite. You don't. Oh my I God! Like you chops. come into this show. But I hate. <laughs> I hate eggs. That's what we heard. Was, he was going to make you a, a a meatball egg and cheese sandwich, and they were like, no, "Eggs." What's your favorite? My favorite food. We have chocolate. Wait, chocolate. Who's your favorite chef? I love Dan Barber. Where is he at? Uh... Blue Hill Stone Barns. No favorite chef. You have no favorite chef. No. Dish you've Top of the never, food chain, you know what I mean? Is there a cook you, a dish you've never mastered? Souffle. Everything. You, you're not a cook. I'm a cook, but I'm definitely not a chef, and I don't master much. What's the difference between cook and chef? A guy that likes to cook and a chef is a guy who actually knows what he's doing. <laughs> I think it's a chef that tells the other people what to do. Mm -hmm. You like over or undercooked? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an undercooked guy. I, I, undercooked. Prefer, I prefer... I hear you're a well-done man. I'm a well... A. I'm Jewish. Like that. Hey, there it is. You're not a well done guy. No, I, I like. If it's it. pink, I, I'm out like of there. You're out of there. I can't even handle it. Right. What? Just can, can you explain this to me just a second? We just have to take a second. To I hate red it. meat. What is what is the thing with? Because my mother, if there, if there's a speck of light in that meat, Correct. it's over. No. What's what is it? What is the kosher, problem? I like kosher. Because there's so it it tells you too much. It's like blood. That's what the red is, and it's. Um, I don't want to eat that. I, I, but you're eating the thing anyway. I know, but it, the, the thought of the red, it's just... You know, first I, would of all, just, I would take a bite of a living cow if I... If I, I mean, I would just eat first the steak directly from the First of all, it doesn't taste good to me. It doesn't. No, if How many times have you tasted it? Well, quite well, a few, because you sometimes you're, some, there are some restaurants where they won't do it they well do done. It. And so I'll say medium well, and then they complain. And I hate that, by the way, when they do that to me. One of the worst experiences I ever had was in a French restaurant in New York. It was lunch. I don't eat eggs. So I sit down, look at the menu, didn't understand one thing on the menu, didn't, couldn't order anything. So I said, okay, I'll have a cheese omelet, 
but I want it burnt, burnt, <laughs> and I want extra cheese and maybe one egg. You know, but I don't want to taste. <laughs> you the want egg. a cheese? You want a cheese omelet sans the eggs? Right, sort of right. like meatballs. <laughs> but no sans the rigatoni. Okay. Gotcha. The chef comes out with a table of six, six guys. Which one ordered this uh, cheese omelet? Get out! <laughs> oh. like, like the soup Nazi. Oh, wow. Get out! He says, me or you? My job or you leave? I will not make this omelet. And what'd you say to him? I left. Yeah, wow. I would leave too. By the way, you're not gonna find any rare meatballs at the meatball shop. No rare no balls. No rare balls. No That's rare right. balls. Well, there's no such thing as a rare meatball. No, our right? balls are fully, fully cooked. <laughs> No, but you can't make a rare meatball, right? That I mean, you absurd. could, but I wouldn't taste it. Would it would be absurd. <laughs> it would be absurd. Yeah, sushi No balls. possible way, right? You're not a sushi man. <laughs> no sushi, period, zero, ever, never. Can't do it. Good night. My wife loves it. Oysters? Yeah. My wife, the other night she had... <laughs> Uh-oh. He's going to say something like tuna. Tuna tartare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wow, she is adventurous. <laughs> hey, what are, you, what are you eating? A tuna tartare. I didn't eat that. Yeah. You guys are regular guys. Oh, yeah, Come regular. On, regular, regular. We're from know. a different generation. I mean, the, there's not as many, you so, know. So, all right, expand for me. We have refrigeration. We and... Give me 10 years from now. 10 years from now. Right, what's happening? How many meatball stores are there? How many meatball stores? 10 years from now, how many meatball stores will probably have around, uh, you know, 15. All in New York? I won't even know about it. I'll just be on a yacht somewhere. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. he'll be on a yacht. All in New York? You're not going to expand? No, we'll, we'll probably, we'll, in 10 we'll, years, we'll, we'll probably we'll, find we'll our be, way somewhere. We'll be out of New York at some point. But, you know, for right now, New York is is our market. We love New York. We're hardcore New Yorkers. and. Uh, but Chicago? I would love to LA. go to Chicago. Jersey? Definitely. Jersey's too expensive. Jersey's going to happen. Jersey's Miami? too expensive. Miami 100%. Love Miami. <laughs> The, why, why'd you guys go? Portland, Oregon. Hey, Probably not. They'd have to not. go to Cali first, though. We'd have to hit Los Angeles first. Uh, up the coast. Okay. You guys are terrific. Thank you so much. Okay, don't forget the meatball shop if you're in New York. Thanks to my guests, Daniel Holzman and Michael Cherno. These are the best meatballs I ever had. Want more information? Go to www.themeatballshop.com to look up their locations. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at Kingsthings. We'll see you next time. Make it well done. <laughs>